guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Winter and this is my sister Jessica. Hello again. We are on our farm. We made a huge little vacation. It's like a mini vacay with our kids and we made a trip to the farm for two days and it's been a lot of fun. And I got my farm, sweet farm iced coffee mug because it's hot. And we got chickens. It's just like a dream come true for my little kids that like don't even this is like totally like off their radar, something they've never done before. So anyways, I have something really fun to talk about. So what happened a year ago, Jessica? Well, a year, um, about, almost a year ago, about 10 months ago, we lived in the same town for quite some time, about five years or so. And then my husband and I, we just relocated across state to a farm here um, in Western South Dakota. So we are about three hours away from, from Winter and her family. Yeah. And that was a really super hard time for me. Like my sister is my best friend in the whole world. And we lived next to each other essentially for I don't know, seven, eight years. Yeah. And I lived with them maybe longer. So 10 years we were about like close, very, very close in the same town. And they lived like, like three blocks from us in the town we were living in. So, and our kids are so close and it was so like difficult when they moved. And so in this video, I really want to like hit on how to maintain a friendship, mm -hmm. like a lifelong friendship with someone when they live close to each other and when you live far away from each other and when life like brings you good things and life brings you bad things because inevitably all those things are gonna happen and everybody mm -hmm. needs to do what's right for their family. And so for Jessica's family, moving to the farm was the right decision for her husband and for her family. And like in my mind, that was a hard thing. It might not have been the right decision for my life, but that's what had to be good for them. And they're like, that's the most important thing. So. I just want to like hit on a few things with that. Are you excited? I'm excited. So the first thing I want to hit on is thoughtfulness. And my sister is probably the most thoughtful person on the face of the planet. I'm not joking. Like, like she, like I have some dietary restrictions and she'll like make me like vegan cookies. Like who even likes those? But she'll like make them for me. Like I'm able to have like different things. And like she thinks through these things. Like even last night for dinner, that she made a whole meal that didn't have any meat or dairy in it because I'm like vegan. And it was just amazing, it was super thoughtful. And like she always like texts me like hilarious things throughout the day whenever she thinks about me. And that just makes me feel like a rock star. And so that's like my first step. It's like, when you think about someone, like you should always like tell them that. You should always express that to them because that's what's gonna make them feel awesome. And like, that's gonna be really cool. Yeah. I think also with relationships, it's good to remember boundaries. Um, I think that's easier the better you know someone um, I think that oftentimes like when you first get married it's really easy to you're in love but at the same time you just need to know what's okay for that person um, so it's working out through those feelings of like is this, is this going to offend this person or is this person happy with the way I think about this or how do I how do I convey this without hurting their feelings and I think the more you get to know someone like a spouse or a friend or a relationship um, the more you get to know them the better it's easier to feel out those boundaries and once you realize like what's okay what's appropriate um, what makes that person feel secure what makes them feel uncomfortable um, once you get to know the person more those boundaries are those boundary lines are become even more evident and clear and you can respect the person like not to keep calling when they're at work or um, if you know that they're not texting you back right away just to know well maybe they're dealing with kids and it's crazy that, yeah. and just to be secure in your relationship know that that boundary is it's, it's okay like you don't have to feel like you have to always yep. be available 100% of the time but also just know that there's this boundary like it's okay to respect each other's boundaries in space yeah I think that we do a pretty good job of that and like we really like being around each other but like we wouldn't just like come to each other's house without each other knowing unless it's like a, a good time like we know each other's schedule really well especially when yes. we lived in town yeah. like I wouldn't go to her house like when she wouldn't know I was gonna come or when it would be a good time like that's just something that we wouldn't do and like I wouldn't stay for like hours and hours and hours because I know for Jessica like family time's a big deal for her so like mm -hmm. I need to respect that boundary for her and like for me like she knows that I'm a very busy woman and if I didn't respond to her right away, she's not gonna be offended with me. So I really think boundaries is a good thing. Cause I'm like, I work all the time. So like her calling me and I don't answer isn't like gonna be a big deal to her. Cause she just knows she's like, oh, she's probably at work or she's dealing with kids. So it's not a big deal. So um, the last thing I wanna really hit on is super something really fun. It's good for all relationship is love languages. And yes. there's like, everybody has a way they like to experience love and express love. And for me, my love languages are like, 
words of affirmation and gifts. Like those are the things that I really like enjoy and I don't like when someone tells me that they love me or they think I'm awesome or think I'm cool like that's awesome. That's why I like comments. That makes me feel good. Not negative ones. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, just like those things. And when someone gives me a present too, I'm just like, that is super thoughtful. I can't believe you weren't around me and you thought about me. Like that makes me feel yeah. really special. Yeah. And my yeah. love language is more like words of affirmation. If you tell me that I am doing a good job or that I'm a good mom or a good wife or something, like that is what I need to just keep going. And that's that makes me feel loved more than anything. Or also acts of service. Like my brother-in-law loaded my dishwasher today and it was awesome and I felt really loved. So it just depends on the person. But when you know someone else's love language, you can speak love to them in a way that they receive it well. Versus like maybe uh, uh, quality time might always be that thing or gifts might make someone feel uncomfortable if they're getting mm -hmm. gifts all the time and maybe they don't know how to deal. So it just depends on what, what's appropriate for you. So. Uh, if you want more information on love languages, I uh, would recommend Gary Chapman's book, yeah. The Five Love Languages. I'll put that in the link below so you can order that off Amazon or wherever you want to order that. So, anyways, those are just our thoughts for the day. Are the chickens they're gone? The chickens left. So, anyways, um, I hope you guys are having the best day ever, and I hope you enjoy this video vlog. We hit 150 subscribers two days ago, and I'm super excited about that. Last time Jessica was here was on Mother's Day, and I had 100 subscribers. So we're growing, and I'm super excited and. Um, if you like having Jessica in the video, like, please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.